screen. Great. All righty. New Creation Church. Well, first, maybe I'll say a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in upstate New York, right in the town of Hartford. And I, when I graduated from high school, I went to Moody Bible Institute and graduated there with a degree in pastoral ministry. The highlight of my time at Moody was meeting Holly in my junior year. She was there for one semester, um, and it was just enough for me to meet and fall in love. And we got married right after I graduated in 2010, in August. And uh, we're living in New York, working for about a year. And I, I knew I wanted to go into pastoral ministry, had a real strong burden, had for years for the Northeast, for church planting or revitalization work, either in Vermont or the upstate New York region where I grew up. And yet I felt, I was only 22 years old, fresh out of Bible college. I'd already had a couple people offer, hey, we got a pastoral position open, do you want to come preach at our church? I, I felt overwhelmed. I, I needed more life experience. I needed more training. And so we applied to Bethlehem College and Seminary in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And it's a small church-based seminary out there. I don't know if any of you have heard of a guy named John Piper. He's a pastor out there. And this is kind of in the church. He just passed the baton to another guy. But the, the uh, church has the seminary in it. So I was a part of that church for four years. After we graduated, I felt st more strongly than ever this past May that the Lord wanted us back in the New England area, but wasn't sure where. And right around that time, uh, Phil Bowen, who you'll see his picture up here, he's one of the elders at Adamsville. He called me and he's like, Joel, we are hoping as a church, Adamsville, which is my home church where I grew up 20-something you know, 20 years I spent in that church, and we want to plant a church in, Ad in uh, Granville. And so I said, um, okay, talk to me more about it. He said, we need a leader. I said, I'll pray about it. And so I prayed, and Holly prayed for a while, and, and we just felt the Lord calling us there. So in December, we moved, and we're in Granville now, and we are in the beginning phases of launching New Creation Church. So why New Creation Church? Yep. The other mic is not either. The other mic. Oh, well, I didn't know if this was supposed to be mic'd or not. I'm sorry. All righty, here we go. Now we got two. I said I've got enough wires to be a suicide bomber, but I'm not. <laughs> new Creation Church. Why New Creation Church? Well, in Christ, it's an identity statement. We are the assembly. The church means assembly. The assembly of the new creation on earth. And second, it's a statement of our mission. We want to hold out the hope of the new creation to the people in Granville. It's a dark town. And we want to embody that new creation hope. So that's why New Creation Church. This is my family. You'll, you can see them over there. But uh, Mercy is four, Silas is two, and Hope is seven months. Granville, New York. Where is Granville? I don't know if you can see that yellow star. It's on my list to change it to red so people can see it a little better. But if you go across the whole state of Vermont, there is Granville. Um, there's Lake George, you may have heard of that, up to the top left. And Rutland, Vermont is about 30 minutes away. Granville. Granville is a town of about 6,500 people right on the New York-Vermont border. So there's part of the town's actually in Vermont. There's Vermonters who would say we, we live in Granville. 98% white is actually even more than that. It's very, uh, just a monoculture. Uh, a lot of um, very, very few, you know, the African Americans in town, there's only maybe a dozen. Uh, their claim to fame, colored slate. They're, if you drive around, all the, the roofs in that area are slate, and some of them actually have like red, like 1908 or 1886 with red or green slate in the roof. It's pretty cool. So that's, that's what they do. They're, they're a slate quarry town, and now that there's not slate roofs in vogue, um, you can imagine what that does for the economy. If for years it's been, this is the thing, uh, there's, it, it's unemployment is on the rise. On the main street, there's uh, about 30 some odd businesses on the main street. 16 of them have shut down in the last 10 years. It's, it's, it looks like a, a mouth with a lot of teeth missing. It's, it's really sad. It's, it's uh, a struggling town. Drug and alcohol abuse are on the rise. My dad's taught in the school there for 30 years. 
the high school and he's taught biology and chemistry and he's seen a steady decline uh, and the kids just don't want to be there they don't want to learn um, and it I mean that's like yeah many of our schools uh, and Granville is no different Granville is really struggling and Rutland is actually the heroin center for the Northeast um, in, in the more rural areas, of course, the cities, there's a pipeline up from New York City over Route 4 through Vermont to Rutland, and then it just gets distributed. And Granville's in the splash zone of that. So there's just growing drugs. And churches in the area are, have been really struggling for years to engage the younger generation. So now you have parents, um, midlife, 40s, 50s, who grew up in the church maybe or have some affiliation but then ran away from the church, want nothing to do with it. And then kids who just, they, have, they don't even know who Jesus is. They, you know, many, many kids have never even heard of Jesus died for the world. Like, what? Um, so, this is a map of Granville. One crazy thing about Granville is a town of 6,500 people. All those red things, there's an arrow down there on the bottom that's pointing towards another uh, red dot, those are church buildings. 17 church buildings in that town and in that kind of broader region. Of those, seven are closed down. Five are quite liberal. Um, five are on a spectrum. The, the, the remaining five are on a, on a spectrum of we preach Jesus to... And, and of all of them are, are small and struggling. And so we really felt for years there's about 20 people that go to Adamsville, my home church, of a church of about 100 people. And there's about 20 that live in the town and, and commute to my home church. And they, they've felt for years, man, we love a, a church where we can preach the gospel in Granville. Well, if you look in the middle there, there's three dots, three red dots in the middle, and there's a blue dot. The blue dot's where we live. That's our house in middle Granville. And those three red buildings there are all closed. The two on the, the farthest, the one on the left and the one on the right, is their, their houses now. Um, the one in the middle is still open. It's the, uh, the, the building. Uh, nobody meets there, but it's not a house. So I'm waiting to hear back from a guy and see, hey, would that be able to be our place of worship? We could fix it up and we could start preaching the gospel there. It's a busy road, um, kind of in the center of things. So we would love to... Preach Jesus there. This is our leadership team. Guy on the left, his name's Carl. His wife's Karen. And the guy on the right is Phil, the guy who called me. And his wife, Sherry. The, the Becklers on the left, they have four boys. And grown boys. And the, the folks on the right have four girls grown. And no marriages in between them. So they, they could be my dad. I, I, both of these guys. And I'm very humbled that they'd be willing to to come behind and alongside a young guy like me and, and join me in preaching the gospel. Carl is a doctor in the town. He's been the town doctor, one of the main doctors, for 27 years. He shares the gospel on an average of three to four times a week. And for 27 years, three to four times a week, and the amount of people he's led to the Lord are under a dozen. And of those, a small, like maybe four or five, have actually walked away from the Lord after coming to know him. It's hard soil, but he's been sowing the seed of the word. And that's actually the theme of this message, is talking about sowing and harvest. And we'll tie back in to the theme of the harvest is now. We believe at Adamsville that the harvest is now. Carl's been sowing seed for 27 years. My dad's been there for 30 years sowing seed. And one of the things that's lacking is a, a strong, vibrant gospel community to make the gospel visible in that town. And that's what we want to do through New Creation Church. Potential recruits. Dear friends of ours from seminary, Brian and Angela, Verrett, and their two little girls, and actually there's a, a third on the way in August, they are hoping to join us this fall. And one of our desires is to have a leadership training uh, program in the area. And, and there's one already existing from my home church and a couple other churches way into New York. And we would team up with them and partner in, in continuing to train leaders. Brian fits right into that picture. He's, work, he's going to start working on his PhD. He's finishing up a degree right now. And he would train leaders from within the context of the local church and try to... We, our dream is a seminary similar to what we graduated from in, in Minneapolis. A church-based seminary. Well, there's no big church. 
that, like Bethlehem that could house a seminary, but there's lots of smaller churches, and if we partner together, which we're already doing, the vision's there, they just need people, they need teachers, and Brian, is, we're already in dialogue, and he would come out, help us, and Lord willing, become one of those teachers. And finally, three phases of planting. Uh, we are in the first phase right now. The first phase, get prepared. Um, I'm on the 18th, next Friday, our church planting organization we're hoping to go through is the North American Mission Board. They're like the church planting arm of the Southern Baptist Convention. And the North American Mission Board has a good training program, and they're doing an assessment for Holly and I as a couple um, on the 18th of March. So we'll be going up to Burlington, Vermont to get assessed. That's part of it. There's been a lot of assessment work going into that, writing, crafting documents, training our leadership team. A strong team is very important in church planting. Uh, when conflict arises, because it will in any type of situation where you're working closely together, you want to be able to weather that. And so we, we're working together on what we believe and, and getting to know each other better. And we're discipling people in Adamsville, trying to help folks rise up to step into the shoes of those who are leaving. It's a scary thing for a small church of 100 to send out 15 to 20 people to plant a church. 15 to 20 key people, core people, leaders. And there are leaders that are staying, good leaders, but a lot are leaving. So that's a prayer. Um, we, we're, we're trying to disciple leaders to rise up. So I'm working full-time right now as a, the pastoral resident for church planting at Adamsville. Um, teaching, preaching, discipling, preparing, reading, training, lots of stuff. That's phase one. Get prepared. Get started. That's the second phase. This summer... Our hope is to get our hands on a building. That building I talked about, we'd love, it could be that one, um, fix it up a little bit, and start doing Bible studies, um, start, do it, start bringing the Bible studies that we are doing, and we are doing, to a location so that we can start developing in the, in the community, oh, we are New Creation Church. And we're going to be launching, that's phase three, go public, in 2017. So we'll probably have a couple services in the morning, maybe one in January, one in February, to kind of dry run services, get the word out. And our, our uh, official sermon, a service where we really want to go live, invite everyone, would be Easter of 2017. And we're praying that Jesus will be big on that day and that we'll be, I'll be able to stand on, in Granville and preach the risen king of Granville. So right now, another thing we're doing during phase one is support raising and prayer and financial support. So that paper I passed out to you guys, um, that's our, one of them is our, our prayer request, the lead team. We would love for you guys to be praying for us. And then as a plant, we're raising three years of financial support for Holly and I so that we can throw ourselves for these three years at least full time into the work of church planting. So we're at 60% right now, and if any of you are interested in that, the information is on that um, paper. We'd, we'd love to have you join our team. So we're, it's $2,000 a month that we're trying to raise. So we are getting there and eager to have folks partner with us. I'm going to send around, I'm done, but I'm going to send around a clipboard. If you would like to receive our monthly email newsletter, um, you can just put your name and your uh, email on here. And this is basically where we, we send out prayer requests, updates, Lord willing, pictures of baptisms. We would love that. So thanks a lot for the opportunity to share.